Hello guys, today we are doing function of which I will be explaining more about parabolic, hyperbolic and exponential. But for now, we will consider parabolic. In parabolic function, we have only two general formula. The first one is f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. The second one is g of x is equal to a into x plus or minus p square, the whole square plus q. Of which plus or minus, it means that our equation can be, can say g of x equals to a into x plus p, the whole square plus q or minus. So, the only thing that you need to do, the first step before you do everything for a function, for a parabolic function, you need to know your shape. How are you going to know your shape? You will consider the given function that you will be given. The first one, if you are given this function or this function, you need to consider the value of A, of which is it's a coefficient. If your A, if your A is greater than zero, your shape should should be should be minimum of which always when you see your a that is positive your a can be actually when i say for a is greater than zero i means that your a can be can be equal to one can be equal to two can be equal to three and etc of which this thing it means that our a is greater than zero then when our a is greater than zero it means that our shape has to be a minimum shape of which you always have to think about smiling when you see your a that is greater than zero then the second the second principle is says for a is less than zero for a is less than zero it means that our a can be equal to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and etc. and etc. Of which our shape for a negative for a negative a of which is less than zero has to be I'm sorry I made a mistake here. Has to be a, a maximum, has to be like this. Then always when you see your a that is negative, you need to be set your your mouth think about your mouth being said then we go again to a turning point of a parabolic function where i will be explaining turning point with different given general formula the first the first principle say that for a given general formula f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c to get to get the x to get x or p the x value of a turning point which we call it p which is equal to p actually we're gonna use when we are given this equation we're gonna use this formula that says x is equal to p is equal to negative b over 2a where p and a is our co coefficient of a given function here our a can be 1, 2, 3, our b can be 2, 4, 5, 6, our c can also be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and etc. and etc. Then to get y of which is of which is equal to q, we are gonna take the original equation that we are given and substitute x, actually and substitute the value of x instead of yeah, actually, we're going to substitute the value of x accordingly to the given equation. Then you will get y as it says y is equal to q is equal to f into negative b over 2a, of which our negative b over 2a is our value of x that we obtain above. You can even compare here. Here it was x, but when we remove x and put the value that we obtain here, we're going to get. Oh, we are going to get something like this. Then you can conclude by saying, therefore, my turning point, my turning point, this TP, it means turning point of which is going to be 
x into y or you can say tp is equal to p into q where your p and q or x and y is a value are the values that you obtain when you were calculating here and here then again for a turning point looking for a given general formula f of x is equal to a into x plus or minus p the whole square plus q for this one is simple and straightforward because you are given that you actually are given the value of the turning point the thing the only thing that you need to do is to is to just take it out and put it as it is to be your turning point meaning our turning point for this given equation here it says plus or minus let us consider here it says plus or minus it means it can be plus it can be minus Meaning, let us consider plus here. Let us say our given equation was saying f of x is equal to a into x plus p the whole square plus q. Our turning point, our turning point, our turning point, our turning point. I'm gonna consider this. Our turning point was gonna be actually for given this function. When you take this P to the outside or to outside, it becomes negative. When you take this P, let's take, we are taking this P to the outside, it becomes negative P. And when you take this P to the inside, it becomes positive P. Then our turning point now, because we are taking this P to the outside and it's positive, it's going to be negative P colon comma Q, where our Q is either is plus or minus we just take as it is if it was plus we are gonna take it as it is but if it was negative we're gonna let's take it was negative yeah we're going to say negative q but because it's plus so that's why we didn't put any sign meaning it's positive but here again our turning point this is our first turning point when we have plus here in the middle of x and p then this is our first turning point. The second turning point is when we have negative here. It's when we have negative here. When we have negative here, it means that our turning point, we have negative here and when we take this, this P to the outside, it will, it will be positive P. It will be positive P. Then Q, Q can either be positive Q or negative Q, it will depend on the sign that you will be given in on your equation. Therefore, because we have negative P, we, take, we took it to outside, it become, ne it become positive. Then we say we have positive P, comma, Q, where Q can be positive or negative, it's gonna, be depe it gonna depend on the given function. But because here is positive, that's why we are saying Q is positive. Then, we move to the axis of symmetry of a function of a of a parabolic function of which in a axis of symmetry again we have two two principles that we, we are gonna use to get our axis of symmetry. The first one it says for this given general formula f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Our axis of symmetry is this x, where x is gonna is equal to negative b over 2a. The only thing that you need to do to determine your axis of symmetry given this equation, you need to know this by your head. They don't give you on, a, on your formula sheet. You need to know this. So you just take b, where b is your coefficients, it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a again, you substitute it. Do not forget this negative. Even here, if it was negative, yo. Even here, if it was negative, even here, if it was negative, you are gonna substitute negative as it is, meaning you are gonna say negative b, so that this negative and this one is gonna multiply each other. That's gonna give it, that's that is gonna give you positive b. But here is positive. That's why we said negative b. 
So the second condition it says given two 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 x intercept. When you are given two x intercept, your axis of symmetry is x. This is your axis of symmetry is x is equals to x one plus x two the whole divided by two. How this narrow gonna take you? Let, let us make an example of this condition. Let's take you are given we are given a function when you are given a function I given this point and this point let us take this is a wait let's take this is a this is b and this is your turning point your a is of symmetry is cross to the point of b of a turning point and it's cross to the point of P of a turning point. This is your axis of symmetry. How are we gonna determine the axis of symmetry? Maybe let's take we're given x is cross to 2 and 0, and here we are given negative 3 and 0. Our axis of symmetry on this given function, that like I said, I make an example of it, is gonna be x we are going to consider this x x1 this is x, x, x2 point a point b this is our x1 x1 this is our x2 this is our x2 then remember that on a on a plane or on a given plane for a y intercept for y axis and x axis an x axis. Remember, for an x axis, y is equal to zero. Y is equal to zero. And for for a for an y axis, x is equal to zero. So that's why here we are having b into this is x value. This is y value. This is x value. This is y value. That's why here because it's an x axis, our our y is zeros. So our axis of symmetry given two intercept two intercept two this it means that we are given two x intercept then we are going to say x1 plus x2 divided by 2 where our x1 is negative 3 plus our x2 is 2 divided by 2 you get your axis of symmetry but sometimes but sometimes it can happen that you are not given these axis of symmetry, you can use them in different kind of scenario or question where they can say calculate x1 or the value of a certain point given a axis of symmetry. Like for example, you may be, let us take a given, these, this is your turning point, this is point A, this is point B, point A, Point B. Let us take point B. point A is three into zero, and you are not given point B. Then here they say your your x your x oh, yeah your axis of symmetry is is x is equal to four point five. Then they say calculate the point of A. How are we going to calculate the point of A? You. To this kind of question, you need to use this question, this this formula of x of symmetry. How are we going to do it? You are going to say, here we have x into 0. Since we know that on an x axis, our y is 0. We don't know our x, we don't know our x, but we know our y is 0. Then, we are going to say x into x1 plus x2 divided by 2 this is x and 0 this is 3 and 0 this is our x1 x1 this is our x2 x2 this is our x of symmetry of which is gonna we're gonna substitute 4.5 x1 is x plus 3 divided by 2 then you sub you solve for x after getting your x, then you conclude by saying our point A, let's take is negative, is negative 3, 
negative 3 is negative 3 into 0. Since we know that our y is 0, we just calculate our values of our value of x of which we presume that when you substitute and solve for x, we are going to get negative 3. That's all for an axis of symmetry. We move, we move to a dominant range, to a dominant range of a parabolic function where I'll be explaining more about the domain and range. The domain, the domain of a parabolic function, it's always, you need to know this, the domain of a, parab a parabolic function, it's always x in R, of which we read this as an x is an element of all real numbers. x is an element of all real numbers. x in R, when you are, you are, we are being asked for a domain of a parabolic function, Always you must write this accordingly as it is. Just cut and paste. X in R, X is, is an element of ordinal numbers. You need to note this kind of R. It has two parallel lines here. X in R. Then for a range, for a range you have two conditions. The first condition it says for A is greater than zero our y is greater or equals to q remember how to get our q our q we get it from a turning point or we can we can yeah we are, we get it from a turning point or for a given function if we need to solve for q we can solve using two general equation of which i did explain how to get q from a how to get q from how to get q when i was explaining the turning point Meaning, this is our first, this is our first, our, our first condition that says for a is greater than zero, y is greater or is, y is greater or equals to q, where, when you are being asked for a range, you need to write this, then you substitute the value of q here, the q can, uh, can either be positive or negative, q can either be negative 5 or positive 5, we don't write this. This is a condition that shows you that how are we going to obtain your range. For a is greater than 0, y is greater or equal to q. Then the second condition is this. For a is less than 0, y is less or equal to q. Meaning for a range we only concentrate on a. On a only. We concentrate on a then we can take it from there and write this is the general formula the only thing that you need to do you just check for a then you substitute the value of q here this sign doesn't change even this q for for only this for this for this condition only this sign doesn't change of which it's always going to be greater or or equals to it's whether this q is negative or positive as long as our a is positive is greater than zero this sign is always like this where now you just you just need to substitute your q the value of q and for this condition also you don't if this q is positive you don't change this sign to be greater or equal to it's always less as long as a is less than zero of which a is negative here a is greater than zero, a is positive. Then we move to to our scenario where I will be explaining more about the determine, determining the equation of a quadratic function. Okay, as I've said, we are continuing with parabolic function where now I'm explaining more about how to determine an equation of a quadratic function. In, in determining the equation of a quadratic function, we only have two conditions. The first condition is says, given, the given x intercept and one point, the only equation that you need to use to determine your, the, your quadratic function is y is equal to a into x minus x1 again into x minus x2 for example of this condition let's take we are given let's take we are given 
Let's think we are given such scenario like this, where we are given the graph of a parabolic function, a graph of a parabolic function, and we are given x-intercept, x-intercept, then a point. This is point A, this is point B, this is point C. And then let us consider that maybe our point A is 3 into 0. Our point, our point A is negative 3 into 0. Our point C is 4.5 into 2. Then they say we must determine, let's, let us presume that this is f of x. Then they say we must determine the function, the function equation of f of x. How are we going to determine f of x given these two, these two x intercept and one point? We are going to use this formula as it is. We just take, take our values and substitute it accordingly. Then we solve for a. After solving for a, then we conclude by simplifying our equation. Meaning our step one is going to be, this is our first condition given x-intercept and one point of which here is our x-intercept. A and B is our x-intercept. This is a point. Let us presume that this is g of x. g of x. We are going to say y is equal to a into x minus x1, x minus x2. Remember, remember I once said this is A, this is B, and it is X intercept. When we say these are X intercept, we are gonna consider this as our X1, X1, this again as our X2, and this is a point that we are given. So we are gonna substitute our X1, X2 accordingly, and remember that when you are substituting you need to put bracket to avoid mistake of which is going to be y is equal to a into x minus our x1 is negative 3. We're going to say minus into minus 3. Then we close bracket. We close bracket. Then again is x minus our x2 is 3. We close bracket again. Then we simplify this. How are we going to simplify it? We are given a point again. We are given a point. Our point is point C, of which is a combination. It's where our graph intersects the, gra the graph of G of X and F of X. And it, in it intersects here at C and here, of which we are not given this point. It's not negligible. It's negligible. Here is point C. Point C is 4.5 into 2 where 4.5 is our x and 2 is our y from point c and then from here we are going to take the point the values of point c and substitute it accordingly where there is x we put we put the value of x where there is y we put the value of y our y here in point c is 2 we're going to say 2 a into our x is 4.5 and remember negative times negative is positive is 4.2 4.2 plus 3 negative times negative is positive 3 then again our x is 4.2 I'm sorry it's 4.5 4.5 negative times positive is negative 3 then from there on we solve for we solve for the value of a let us presume that our a we get negative half then after obtaining our a we are gonna say y is equal to we substitute a we come again to this equation we write it here we say it y we substitute the value of a negative negative one over two into x 
minus plus x3 x minus 3 then from there from here we just simplify x times x x times negative 3 3 times x 3 times negative 3 then after simplifying these you multiply the simplified the simplified equation with negative half after simplifying the simplified yeah. after simplifying after simplifying all these equations we are going to conclude by saying y is equal to the certain v the certain equation let us presume that it can be half x square negative half x, x square plus six x minus minus six let us presume that this is our quadratic equation it's our final quadratic equation by using this condition that says given x intercept and one point and use this formula and given this we, we i use this as our example on how to use this given given condition then the second condition says that given a turning point and one point and determine a quadratic quadrat and determine a quadratic function how are you going to actually give it a turning point and one point and they say we must determine a quadratic function the 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 only the only equation that you need to use is it says y is equals to a into x plus p the whole square plus q where let me make an example of this second condition again so that you can see how can we how can we use this formula let us presume that we are given a certain scenario certain example certain graph that has a turning point and one point then they say we must determine a quadratic function how we're going to approach such such question let us take our examples like these and we are given this is our turning point let us presume that is 2 is point a here is 2 and negative 4 2 and negative 4 and again we have a point this is point b of which is 4 and three, two and two and negative four. This is our turning point. This is our turning point. This is a given point according to this condition that says given a turning point and one point and determine a quadratic function. How are going to determine this kind of this kind of this kind of question? We're going to take this equation as it is we don't change anything you just take this equation as it is y is equal to a into x plus p the whole square plus q then from there on you substitute p remember that in a turning point this is a point of p this is a point of q and our point of p is equal to uh, is equal to the equals to the value of x and our point of q is equal to the value of y our value of x here this is our p this is our q and again this is our x this is our x this is our y our x our y we are going to substitute it accordingly Remember, if our p is negative, let us consider this equation. We say it when we take, because our p here is positive, when we take this p to the outside, it's going to be negative p. But here, in this turning point, we're given that our p is positive 2, of which before it was negative. Then we're going to substitute it inside. When you substitute it inside, it's going to be negative 2. But when you take it outside, it's, it gives us negative 2, as they say it here. Then let's consider it a into x. We see it two because it's positive. When you take it inside, then I mean negative two square 
We don't consider the sign of Q, whether it's negative or positive, we just substitute as it is because here our Q is negative 4, we're going to say Q is negative 4 and how we're going to solve for A, always when you are we're given this kind of equation, this kind of condi condition, we, the only step is to find A, after finding A, then you simplify your equation, substituting your A, then you do the rest. How are we going to solve for A here? We need to take consider the next point that you are given here, of which is point B, where our x value is 4 and our y value is 3. We're going to substitute it accordingly. Our y is 3, so it has to A into 4 minus 2, the whole square minus 4. We solve for A. After solving for A, let us presume that our A, we got 1. After getting one, I didn't calculate this, I just presume that at the end, after solving everything, simplifying everything, our A is going to be one. It's not the correct answer, but I presume. Then, after getting your A, then you conclude again and say, therefore, our Y is close to, you substitute, you substitute one to a given function. We come to this function again, substitute A. Our a is 1, of which you cannot substitute anything. We're going to say x, where negative p squared minus 4. Then you expand this. After expanding this equation, you simplify it until it gives you a quadratic format, of which let us presume again that it may be, it is going to give us x squared minus 4x. Mm, plus 2. This can be our quadratic format of our final equation that they, they, they might need it. Actually, they might tell you to calculate or find it. Then, and now I'm going to move to explain more about determining an x-intercept. Okay, now we are doing intercept where I will be explaining more about how to get x-intercept and y-intercept and also the reflection on how to get how to reflect along y and along x-axis the first principle about the x-intercept about intercept is to actually we have two principles here as you can see we have for x-intercept actually we determine x-intercept in each and every curve this intercept you can you can use it for parabolic actually this basic this condition you can use it to determine x intercept for parabolic for exponential and for hyperbolic then again for to deter, again for y intercept you can also use this condition to determine y intercept for parabolic exponential and hyperbolic even for a reflection the the reflection you can use this condition for hyperbolic, parabolic, and exponential. Meaning, we'll start with intercept. For intercept, né? to determine x-intercept, you need to let... To, to determine x-intercept, you need to let y to be equal to 0, then you solve for x. And again, for y-intercept, you need to let x be equal to 0, then you solve for y. Then for a reflection, for a reflection, you we have two conditions again. Your, your function can be reflected along y axis, your function can be reflected along x axis. When they say when they say reflect g of x into y of x actually when they say right your g of x when f of x is reflected along y axis you need to note that your x has to be negative when you are reflecting you are changing your variable of x to be negative when you when you reflect it to y axis your variable of x to that given to that given function it becomes negative and when you reflect it along x axis, the variable of y it changes to that given function to be negative. For an example of reflection, I'll do it here. 
let's take we are given a function of a hyperbolic function where we have f of x equals to y is equals to let's take is 2 over x plus p plus 5 plus 7 plus 5 plus 7 plus 5 plus 7 then we say we must we must write an equation of g of x where we reflect where your f of x is reflected along y axis and rem and remember that when we reflect a function along y axis your x variable changes to be negative meaning that our g of x is gonna be equals to y is equals to two over plus seven our we need to we are changing this this y this variable of x to be negative when we reflect f of x and when we reflect f of x along y axis we change this to be negative as we stated there on that principle that says uh, when you reflect y axis your x become negative here it is we're gonna change this to be negative so that you can get your x plus five this equation show that this this equation, this g of x, is a, is a reflection of f of x along y axis. Along y axis, you need to know that. Along y axis, your x become negative. And again, let us, let us make an example. Let us take that. We are given the very same function, f of x, again. Okay? And they say we must determine g of x reflected. We must determine g of x when it is reflected along x axis and when when it is reflected along x axis we need to note that our y has to be negative our y has to be negative meaning our y become negative of which is gonna say f of x is equals to y f of x is equals to y and g of x again is, is gonna be equals to y of which we re, well they say it determine g of x when f of x is reflected along y axis Along x axis as kiss. How are we going to approach this? Since we know that when we reflect along x axis, our y become negative. So we are gonna say g of x because it's negative here. Uh, we are gonna say negative y is equal to two over x plus five plus seven. But we cannot write it like this. We need to simplify it until we get a positive y. Until we get a positive y, so that we can make y our subject of the formula. How are we going to? How are we going to get? How are we going to simplify this? We need to divide the whole by negative one, so that we can get y as our y as positive. How we're gonna say? <laughs> Let us consider that you must note every time when it is reflected along y along x axis, you need to multiply your y with negative, then you divide it with negative the whole. The whole this is one term, this is the second term accordingly. When you reflect your function along x axis, we're gonna divide with negative one, negative one. And this this term with negative one, this term again with negative one. When we divide it here, we're gonna get positive, which is negative one divided by negative one. It's gonna give us positive y of which is gonna be. We're gonna say g of x is close to y, close to positive x. And when it arrives here, we're gonna multiply. We're going to multiply. Gonna we're gonna. Divide this term of which is gonna give us negative two over x plus five minus seven. Minus seven. You have to note that when we divide by negative one here, the only variable or value that changes is this is this two. Why two? Because it's a denominator, it's a numerator. We don't consider 
the denominator when we are dividing such function, we need to consider the numerator. Since since we divide by negative one, our numerator, which is which is two, is gonna be affected. Of which now is negative two. And again, here we have one as our denominator. This is our numerator. We are we are affecting our numerator again with negative one. Of which now it is given us negative seven. And this is our new equation. When you reflect it along x-axis, your y become negative, your y become negative, and then we divide by negative 1, the whole, then here it is, it changes the, de the denominators of the equation, then we get this function of which is y is equal to negative 2 into over x plus 5, the whole minus 7. Thank you, I will be doing the... Then example of a parabolic function. Thanks. Now we are doing an example of a parabolic function where I will be applying the principle that I was explaining before of a parabolic function. In, a, in our example, this, this example I took it from November 2015 of which it was the final exam of 2015. The first question, actually, we are given that, no, no, before we can start everything, let us come to our graph and analyze our graph before we can look what we are given and the questions accordingly. In our graph, we have this graph where this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis, and we are given that our, actually, we have this kind of graph that comes here, start here and stop here and again we have this graph that start here, comes then stop here of which this one, the first one is f of x and the second one is g of x and when we analyze it we can we can point out some of the some of the some of the points that were given, we are given point P, we are given point T, we are given point Q for f of x. For g of x, we are given point R, we are given point S, we are given point Q, we are given point T. Then, when we consider point P, Q, and R, we can say that point P, Q, and R is our x-intercept of both equation of both our function f of x and g of x and point t and point s is our turning point of g of x and f of x and again point t is a y intercept of of g of x then how are we going to actually let us look on the given here we are given f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 18 and again g of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Then from our given and our graph we can now start looking on the question that we are given also. The first question it says write down the coordinate of t. Write down the coordinate of t. Of t. t is a point. It's our point on the graph, and uh, we say that point T is here, and point T is a turning point of f of x. It's a turning point of s of f of x, and again, point T is a is a y intercept of f of x, and it's a y intercept of g of x again. Then how are we going to answer this question? We're going to say okay. From our given, we are given f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus b a plus negative 2x squared plus a b g of x is a x squared plus b x plus c. We can use g of x because g of x, our coefficients are a, b and c of which we can get a point at a values. We can get the values of point c using g of x. We can only consider f of x and we say from f of x point t is a turning point and again is a y intercept of f of x then we will use that that condition that we are going to consider point t 
with f of x as our y intercept of f of x of which we are going to say a or f of x remember is equals to y is equals to negative 2x square negative 2x square plus 18 then we need point t how going to how are we going to get point t we say it from f of x in our f of x function point t is a turning point and again is a it's a y-intercept so we are gonna consider point t here as our y-intercept how are we going to consider it we are going to say in our y-intercept remember our y-intercept our x is zero we are gonna say let x equals to zero then we solve for y y is equals to negative two x squared plus eighteen then we substitute x accordingly. Y is equal to negative 2 into 0 squared plus 18. Then y is equal to 18. Then we continue that. Therefore, point T is equal to our x is 0. Our y is 18. This is our point T. Then we look again for our second question. Our second question says that we must determine the coordinate of Q. We come again and look up for Q. Our Q is here. And remember that our Q is in X axis. And in X axis, Y, in X axis, Y is equal to zero. In Y axis, X is equal to zero. Always. So we will come here and look up for point Q. Point Q is an intersection of f of x and g of x. So we can conclude that because f of x we are given coefficients that are numbers and g of x we are given coefficients that are variable also, we are going to ignore g of x and consider f of x and we say it, and we say it, point Q it's an x intercept of it's an x intercept of g of x and f of x but the f of x were given the coefficients that are numbers so we're going to consider f of x again and say number b say number b number b is our we will say f of x has to y is plus negative two x squared plus 18 but because we say it our q is situated along the x intercept along the x axis we will let y is equal to zero then we solve for x we'll say y is equal to negative two x squared plus 18 we substitute zero to y negative 2x squared plus 18 then we are left with negative 2x squared plus to negative 18 I'm gonna take this 18 to the other side it become negative 18 we divide by we divide by divide by negative 2 is gonna give us x squared squared to 9 then when you arrive here since we know that our x value of point our x value of point p of point q is our y value of point q is close to zero now we can calculate our x value and as we are calculating it we can we cannot put a square root since we want x value only if we can put a square root we are going to get two values by team we don't want two values because we are not being asked about point p so we are gonna say we're gonna demonstrate this this nine to be in an exponential form of which is gonna be x square is close to three square therefore x is close to three then you conclude by saying therefore when q is close to three which is three and our y is zero as we say it zero 
Then we are done with point Q. Then the, the third question says that given that x is close to 4.5 at point S, then we must determine the coordinate of R. We come again and look up for S. S is here and S is a turning point of G of X. And the value that we are given is an X, it's an X value of a turning point. And now remember that an X value of a turning point, X value of a turning point is close to P and is close to X where our X is an axis of symmetry. And I remember that we have point Q, our point Q is 3 and 0, our point Y, our point R is X and 0, our point X, our point S is 4.5 since we are given now, 4.5 and 0, and Y, negative Y since it is below the X axis and in the fourth quadrant. Then now we can be able to determine the coordinate of R. How are we going to determine it? We are going to determine, since we see it, our X is a, this X that we are given, which is 4.5, which is 4.5. 4.5 is close to X value of a turning point, it's close to P, it's close to X value of the, it's close to the X of cement, of which we can indicate as X. Then we come again and say, Therefore, number C, number C, point number C, number C, we say it, we are given X, and X, we say it, so now we are going to consider that X as, given X is close to 4.5, and we are going to consider this X as our X, X is of symmetry, X is of symmetry. And we say that in an axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry when you are given two x intercept, x intercept and divide by two, these can give us our axis of symmetry. But here they say the one point r and point r is also and point r is also x is also is also along x axis. Then we can say that 4.5 is our x, x of symmetry and our x1, x2, we come again to the graph and look up for x1, x2. Since this graph, S point S is a turning point of G of x and the QR now we consider as, as, x, as x intercept point of, as x intercept of G of x. So we're going to consider that this 3 is our x1, this x is our x2, then we're going to substitute this and this accordingly to that, to that formula of isosymmetry. Then we come up again and say here we, is the, we have 3 plus x. Remember that I don't, I don't put x2, I put x only, then divide by 2, then I make I'll make x the subject of the formula. This is going to give us 4.5 times 3 times 2. 4.5 times 2 give us 9. 9 equals to 3 plus x. These two multiply these. We cross multiply here. These two multiply these. Then we got 9. And this one multiply. This is also divided by 1. This, the whole of this multiply by 1, give us this. Then the, this 3 to the other side, give us 9 minus 3, of which x gonna be 6. Then we conclude by saying, therefore, our point R is class to 6. Then we say it along x axis, our y is 0, then we say it's 0. Then again, we come to Number D, number D say that we must determine the value, determine the value for which G of the second G of X prime the second G prime G second prime X is greater than zero. We must determine the value of X. The value of X, how are we going to determine the value of X? 
and we're gonna say since they say we must determine the value of x where g second prime x say determine x where g second prime x is greater than zero since we know our g our g our g our g is since we know our g our g is g of x equals to a x squared plus b x plus c we are going to derive this g of x into a second prime g of x so that we can determine the value of x we come here again and say it substitute g of x we say it given g of x first it comes to a x squared plus b x plus c. Then we derive this. When we derive this, remember when we are deriving g prime x equals to. When we are deriving, we take this exponent two multiply by a is gonna give us two a x. Then we minus we minus one, so we two minus one so give us one. Then is x. Then here again, you say plus. This is the exponent here is one. One times b is b a uh, is b. Then one minus one is zero. Any number to the power zero is one. Then one times b is b. Then when we derive when we derive when we derive a constant. We are we always get zero. So we are gonna we are not gonna get we are not gonna write that zero. So we come again to we derive g second prime g second prime x is equals to again we derive this when we der differentiate this gonna give us this is one again one times two a gonna give us two a then one minus one, one minus one give us zero, and x to the power zero, any number to the power zero is one, one times two a is two a, then when we differentiate a constant, we always get zero, so we are gonna left with this thing. Then from here, since we are no longer having x here, it means that the value of x is infinite. So we will conclude by saying the value of x Continue by saying for all, for all, for all, for all, x is an element. It's an element of all real numbers. Or you can say that, or you can say that, or you can say your answer is negative infinity. To infinity. It's either you write this and this because we write for all x is, is an element of all real numbers because here on the second prime the second prime of x we don't have x here that's why we are writing this. Thanks for watching our video.